Hey, you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company, where we do budget-friendly DIY design and decor. And today we are making Christmas trees with scrap wood, with tumbling tower blocks, and you know, whatever else I found in my stash. So today we are going to remake the tumbling tower two-sided Christmas tree that you guys went absolutely nuts for last Christmas in July. And I made it very quickly. So today I'm going to make it slowly. We're going to talk our way through it. I'm going to give you guys a couple of diagrams so you can grab a screenshot and figure out exactly how to replicate this. But it is so easy and so much fun and just to show you how versatile this project is we're going to make one like this i'm not using the salt shaker for the bottom this year we're going to make one like this but then we're going to make a second one and make this a fully 3d all the way around tree let's get started on this one Here's your diagram. You can grab a screenshot of this and you'll be able to see exactly how you put this size of the tumbling tower block tree together. So this entire thing took just shy of one box. So if you wanna make two of these or do them back to back, like we're gonna to do today, you're gonna to need two of the large boxes of the tumbling tower blocks. And I mean, you really can't beat a project that's gonna cost you like, three dollars we're not going to include the glue in it and stuff like that so let me get making this and give you all your instructions and we're going to be finished with a gorgeous tumbling tower block budget christmas tree so i'm starting this one with nine seven five three two one and then we're going to build up as we go and that's the thing with this you can scale this as much as you want so if you start smaller on your bottom row you're going to end up with a shorter tree if you start bigger on your bottom row you're going to get a bigger tree and I had so much fun making these last year and I will be sure to link that video so you can check it out if you're not familiar with it I've left these running long. I didn't clip anything out and I didn't do it in a really quick time lapse because I wanted you guys to be able to see how exactly to put this together. And I think you can see it is super simple. Okay, next step, we're gonna come in by one block on each level and we're gonna start building it up this way.
okay time to stack these together and i'm still just going to use the tacky glue to do that all right let's put these together i i am so excited to see how this looks all right let's stand it up and we're going to give it a little squeeze oh look at that that looks so cool anybody else thinking like empire state building very cool an empire state inspired christmas tree she is all put together she's stuck good i love this now i have a couple of bases this one is a homemade candlestick i picked up at the restore for a dollar this is i presume a candlestick as well i thought the shape was really interesting when i saw it um so we're gonna try which one looks best and you guys can let me do know down in the comments which you would have picked. All right, I'm hoping that this is the one that works. So we're gonna try this one first. So just popping that on top, kind of give you a sense. I don't dislike it, but it feels a little more simple than I wanted. So if I was to put it on this one, can you kind of see, whoops, I wanna drop it. This one, feels way I think I like that this is a little bit more ornate when this is so geometric so I think we're gonna go with that one but now that I look at it I feel like we're gonna leave the base this color and just paint this part so set that one aside we're gonna paint this next so I finally picked up my lazy Susan I've been looking for one of these every time I go thrifting but you know, I didn't want to pay a lot of money for it. I'm going to get it covered in paint, but this is going to make my life so much easier. So anyway, five bucks. I thought I could handle that. It was really sturdy. It wasn't like a, you know, plastic one that was going to come apart. So this will be my first time using it today. And I'm kind of excited. Going to use my antique wax to put a coat all over this and it'll kind of match up with this a little bit better. Well, I can't believe it. We finally did it. We got together and we made the tumbling tower block Christmas tree that everybody went bananas for last year. Like I am talking several hundred thousand views on that video, which I will link down below. I really hope that you guys get a chance to make this one and I hope you have just as much fun making it as I did. So for this Christmas tree, I have a whole bunch of these rosettes. I actually picked them up at the ReStore like uh, three years, like pre-COVID, let's put it that way. So like at least three years ago, they had a bucket of them and they were selling them for like, they were 10 cents each or something. So needless to say, I bought a bag. I uh, haven't used very many of them and I'm going to use a whole bunch today. <laughs> So my idea for this one is really very simple. We're going to just create a stacked Christmas tree with the, I'm going to get these all glued up flat and then we'll put it on there together to make sure that none of the glue comes out at the front. I don't want to have to try to deal with that after. So I'm going to keep my glue towards the bottom of the piece on all of these. All right, I'm gonna let that set up and then we'll attach it to the panel and go from there. So after much, much indecisiveness over what I was gonna do with this tree, I decided to make a wash. I'm gonna use that new Oakum Gray from Fusion Mineral Paint. I've got some water here, so I'm gonna water it down and just put on a light gray wash here. Thank you. 
All right, to finish this one off, I'm gonna use some greenery and put something in the middle. I'll show you the idea I got on Pinterest so you can kind of see where I'm going. But loving the Oxum Gray, but I think I wanna put just a tiny bit of a uh, white dry brush on top, just to lighten it a little bit, not to go crazy. So I'm gonna go in with my little chippy wax brush thing that, well, I use it for everything. I'm gonna put a little bit on and I'm gonna pretty much instantly wipe it off so that I'm just getting it in a few places. I'm also going to barely put anything on here and I'm gonna offload a whole bunch of it. And I'm using a wet wipe, not paper towel, because I want to make sure that it's a little bit damp so I can, you know, just keep moving it around. And this is what I'm talking about. That is the goal. So I have two different kinds of greenery here and some just sort of creamy white little beads from the dollar store. So we're gonna create this really pretty little centerpiece in here. I think it's gonna come out really good. Once I added that little Dollar Tree engraved cutout star, I decided it needed something else in that sort of brown family with great texture. And I had some three ply twine, uh, so I just unwound it and tucked a few pieces in here and there. And I just love the way it finished it off. I am absolutely crazy about the way this one came together and I wish I hadn't waited so long to make it with those little restore rosettes. I really hope you guys love this one too and make sure you go down to the comments and tell me if you would have done it the same way or if you would have made it slightly different. All right, I have been saving these. Again, I know this seems like a common theme today, but these have been in my studio for three years. I had an old piece of furniture that I got rid of, and as it was going out the door, I grabbed the legs off it. Because they were great chunks of wood, and I had no idea what I was gonna do with them, but I was gonna do something with them. So I had to get Bruce to give me a hand taking the dowels out that screwed them into the piece of furniture just because he has way more hand strength than I do. Um, so I was a little torn. I think I'm gonna go at them and sand them, but not necessarily to sand them back to nothing because they're pretty, you know, yellowy wood, but I think I'm gonna sand them pretty good. <laughs> I know there's even paint on them from, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm gonna sand them and then we're gonna stack them up, boom, boom, boom. I was calling it my Minecraft Christmas tree when I was kind of planning it. Anyway, let's get sanding and go from there.
Okay, well, that didn't take too long. So I've got these guys all sanded and they are like the worst possible wood. You can see here, they are literally pieces pieced together. They are in really rough shape on the one side because that is what would have been on the floor. Um, but you know what? We were aiming for a rustic Christmas tree and we are gonna get a rustic Christmas tree. So I am going to stain these or whitewash these, I guess would be a better description. I did a little practice. So on the one side where you've just got one grain, I love the look. The other side is a tiny bit rougher where you can see all the three pieces that were laminated together. But again, going for a rustic Christmas tree. I pulled this little guy out of my stash and I'm going to stack him up on top, but I think I'm gonna go spray paint him white. And then I wish I had some gold wax, but I don't. So I'm just gonna go spray paint him white and he's gonna go on the top of the tree. And in the meantime, let's get these whitewashed. And while they're drying, I'll paint that. And while that's drying, I'll stack these up. And before you know it, we're gonna have a beautiful Christmas tree. Well, these certainly dried beautifully. That white wash of chalk paint just took down the yellow and covered how seriously imperfect these old furniture legs are. So next thing is we're gonna stack them up and I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue so I get a good long-term hold, but I'm also gonna use my glue gun just so that they were stuck together and I can keep moving. I also, while I was sitting here, and what you can't see is I can see like my thrift store, like, we'll just call it a hoard. We're not gonna call it a stash. And I could see this from where I was sitting and I thought, I think this is gonna make the perfect base, but let's get it stacked up first and then see what this looks like underneath it. Cause I have lots of other options, but like, look at the color. Doesn't this just scream, put me together? And then the only problem is that little finial I have for the top, I will have to try and replicate this super cool look so it's got like a, a nice cohesive look. So first things first, let's get this stacked up together. So this is all stacked up and I have my adorable tiny candle holder. This was $2.99 at the thrift store. And oh, what's underneath it? I'm trying to see where it came from. No, it's too faded. That's too bad. It's a super, super old price tag. It was underneath it. So let's get this put together. I'm gonna to be using my Gorilla Super Glue today on the rim of this, and then I'll put some hot glue in the middle so it will give me that instant and long-term hold. So, and the only problem is I cut way too big a hole in the top of this. And I have to be careful it doesn't come out too insanely fast. Like that, big old glob of glue. Ugh, globs of glue. Like seriously, Lisa. We don't have 16 million pairs of scissors in here that would have done a beautiful job cutting a nice fine hole. A little bit there. I never mix my glues, or certainly not intentionally, uh, because I don't think you're gonna work if you do that. All right, I'm gonna flip this over and get it attached, which you probably can't see, but to get it even look at that isn't that cool i think that is absolutely like it was made for this tree i'll get you a better look when uh, when we're all finished okay brought in my finial from outside i just gave it a quick coat of spray paint 
And now I want to try and replicate the look on the bottom of this. So I've got some warm white paint, which is definitely a little bit yellower than what we have here. But I figure as a base coat over the white and then a little bit of antique wax, just like this has picked up the details in, in, in a darker finish. We'll do the same thing here and bring out some of the highlights on there. And then we'll attach it and make it our tree topper. I think this is gonna look really pretty. So first things first, let's get a coat of paint on this. This is one of those things where like, there's literally nowhere to hold it. And this was not the right brush. I should have grabbed a softer one. Eesh. Eh, I don't like the way this is going on. Hold on, we're gonna switch brushes. Let's see. This one's a little bit softer. Let's see if that goes on better. Ugh. And because this was, I was thinking white was gonna be the finish, this is a little slick. So I'm gonna have to put on a thin coat here. And then, actually, what if I like stipple it on? So we don't have brush strokes and then that'll be really cool when it dries and uh, and we put the wax on it. Let's try that. Oh, yep. I like the way that's going on. Alrighty, my little finial is painted. Now, <laughs> Pro tip for you, when you heat gun a metal finial, uh, yeah, don't touch it right away. Um, learn from the people who did touch it right away. So I've got it cooled down. I mean, it's, it's warm, but it's not hot anymore. I got a wet wipe here. I've got this brush that I often use with my antique wax, and I'm just going to pounce it on and get it in all those little details. And it's gonna stick because I stippled the paint on as well. And I got my wet wipe to take off any extra. And remember what we're trying to do is make it look like this. So the top and the bottom are the same. So not a ton needed. We just wanna sort of gently get it over top of the detail like this. And um, well, let's see if we can get it close, shall we? All right, I only want like a tiny bit on my brush. Like you can barely see it. So here we go. I wish there was something I could like hold on to here, but oh, the first part is like literally the most scary part, isn't it? You're like, oh, it's too much. I've ruined it. Okay, okay, oh my gosh, it's working. It's the little things, isn't it, you guys? It's always the little things that amuse us the most. My hands are dirty. All right, how is that? Oh my goodness. I am so pleased with that. I'm just going to, I'm gonna mess around with this just a tiny bit more. I wanna get a little bit more of the brown on the bottom and I'll be back when it's time to put this together. Now that this is done, I just want to show you how different it looks. So this had champagne colored gold paint from when it used to be a bed. This is now, so I got a coat of white spray paint, then some cream acrylic, and then a little bit of antiquing wax. And I am absolutely crazy about how well that turned out. Well, I know I say this all the time, but I am absolutely crazy about this Christmas tree. I love that I finally used these furniture legs that I have had forever. And I love the way a couple of pieces that I had in my stash just completed it and was literally the topper on the tree. Well, that's a wrap for me today, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed my three scrap wood Christmas trees for Christmas in July this year. I have lots more videos coming your way, and I'm going to do my best to be a little bit more consistent. In the meantime, hope you have a super day, and we'll see you in the next video.